So it's called Value Driven Service Innovation. It's a four year project sponsored by the Research Council of Norway, Borg Innovation and Accenture. And we are trying to move the field of service innovation one step ahead and both uh, for academics as well as for uh, practitioners. So we have developing a model uh, that we also do a lot of case studies on uh, to try to see uh, how good are companies at service innovation and how can they become better. In this research project, we uh, collaborate with uh, milieus in, uh, at the University of uh, Oxford, at the, at the University of California in Berkeley, but also with the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation in Washington, D.C. And in ITIF, we work with Mr. Stephen Isel, who is uh, here at BI today and have had uh, a, a talk at the breakfast meeting uh, where we looked specifically at one of the cases in the research project, which is Apple versus uh, Nokia. Well, what Apple has really done is create an integrated product service ecosystem uh, between its iTunes uh, platform, its application stores, and its electronic devices. So when you look at the story of Apple versus Nokia, the iPhone versus Nokia's phones, it really goes back to the iPod because what Apple did with the iPod and iTunes was to create a revolutionary internet content platform that integrated services and products. And rolling the story forward, it was in 2005 that Steve Jobs feared that a phone manufacturer would come along and cannibalize his iPod uh, by putting music onto the phone. Fearing this was what led Steve Jobs to embark on the creation of the iPhone in the first place um, and also to develop a phone that, as he said, uh, would be a phone for Steve Jobs that would have all the cool features that you know, a, 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 a tech geek would want. Um, so it was really the nexus of iPod, iTunes, iPhone that spawned uh, the threat to Nokia, which it didn't really respond very well to. It took seven years after Apple invented the iTunes system for Nokia to come along with something similar. So it didn't recognize the threat that would ultimately come from the iPhone. Um, of course, there were other challenges as well. Uh, Nokia's phones, which used to be regarded as very customizable, very hip phones, uh, today are regarded as a little boring, while Apple's phones are the very cool fashion statement, fashion accessories. Um, as Apple was able to uh, create this integrated product services ecosystem, it was able to hire the best software engineers, the best top flight engineering talent in Silicon Valley. Nokia had trouble hiring the best talent, um, uh, changing its organizational culture to be able to keep up with the speed of innovation and create an entrepreneurial kind of risk-taking environment. And so ultimately what Apple did between the iTunes and later the applications that you could get on the iPhone and the iPad was develop this very attractive ecosystem uh, that enrolled other partners to come in and make money on the platforms that it had built. Today, Nokia is still very much of a handset manufacturer, not an ecosystem player. And uh, if Nokia looks to catch up to the success of Apple, it can't be just focused on making very nice mobile phones, it's got to be focused on developing a services ecosystem for its customers. Government's role in supporting innovation at a national level occurs at multiple steps or multiple levels. The most fundamental is setting the framework or factor conditions for innovation to flourish in a nation. This refers to government's role in putting in place an effective legal system, uh, uh, putting in place a strong educational environment, uh, putting in place uh, strong physical and digital infrastructures that encourage commerce. So the, the most basic level for government to play is in kind of this, this, this context and this, this condition setting. But governments can go further and should go further uh, in a number of ways. Uh, first, by investing in basic research, funding research at universities and national laboratories that uh, is the basic seed corn of future innovation uh, is a critical role for governments. Um, yet firms, uh, the government also has a role to support innovation directly at a firm level. And while government should not be investing directly in companies like France did with Group Bull, 
governments can invest in the innovation skill sets of companies, uh, helping them uh, develop innovation capacities, helping them come into public-private partnerships um, and, and, and build their innovation skill sets. A uh, government also has an important role to play itself in being a driver of innovation, both by being an early adopter of new technologies like uh, mobile commerce, uh, digital encryption, um, uh, the smart grid, uh, so government can uh, stimulate innovation across the nation by being uh, the first adopter of emerging technologies, and it can stimulate innovation inside its own institutions uh, so that we have a better healthcare system or we have a better transportation system. Finally, it's very important that governments put in place incentives that encourage private sector innovation. And this includes things such as a research and development tax credit, uh, credits for firms when they invest in new capital equipment or new technologies, and when they invest in workforce training. So creating incentives at the economy level that drive private sector innovation is critical. What we see the best nations doing are focusing on what we call uh, the four T's, uh, tax, trade, technology, and talent, as well as access to finance, uh, helping firms uh, get capital. So when you look at innovation policy in Nordic countries, um, I think the first thing is to understand that uh, fundamentally a nation's only source of sustainable comparative advantage is education, is how it educates its society. So. Uh, ensuring that uh, from the K through 12 in the university level, um, Nor uh, the Nordic countries are producing talent that can go into a global marketplace with the skills, the technology, communications, analytical skills they need. That's critical to uh, create a, a base, a pool of talent upon which the firms in a sector, of, in, a, in a nation, can innovate. Um, governments should continue to make robust investments in basic research, uh, and, 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 and they should also uh, invest in uh, not just basic research, but also in applied or translational R&D platforms. So how can they facilitate the commercialization and the movement of technology and, and basic scientific discoveries out of universities, but, but help those get commercialized into new product or services offerings by the marketplace? So it's a combination of, of both basic research investment in basic science, but also uh, facilitating that commercialization process of new technologies in the marketplace where there's an important role for governments. And also, uh, finally, um, being sure that it is government that is spurring deployment of digital technology systems, deploying plenty of wireless spectrum so that this can be a platform for innovation, uh, deploying the smart grid so we can have more efficient uh, energy networks, uh, putting in place intelligent transportation systems so we can bring information to uh, the transportation network, and then especially where the government runs healthcare uh, to be an early adopter of new technologies that increase productivity and improve patient outcomes in healthcare is critical.